The OCD and Anxiety Podcast by Robert James Coaching. Hello and welcome to the OCD and Anxiety Podcast, where we explore how to have a more positive relationship with anxiety disorders, taking back control so that you can start living the life you choose and not the one chosen by your fears. Hello there and welcome to episode 342. Wherever you are today, I hope that you're doing very well. And if you are struggling with OCD or anxiety, then you can get a free session with me. To get that, you can head over to my website, robertjamescoaching.com. There you can book in for that free session or if you prefer, you can send me a message and let me know about what you're struggling with. Uh, Now, in today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about mindful obsessions um, which may sign uh, may sound like a kind of contradiction, um, but actually, when we can bring a certain level of mindfulness to our obsessions, um, we may still be obsessing about things. But actually, we can learn how to be uh, a little bit more mindful, where we create a bit more separation between ourselves and those obsessions. Um, you know, we may not get rid of them altogether, but just by bringing some mindfulness to them, we can help to accept them and move past them. So I really hope that you uh, enjoy and find it helpful. If you would like to follow on Instagram, that would be great. My Instagram handle is at Robert James Coaching UK. Also, we do have Patreon for the podcast. So if you would like to sign up for that, you can by following the link in the show notes. So many thanks, guys. And off we go. <music> So to get us started, I wanted to share a quote by Gabor Mate. The attempt to escape from pain is what creates more pain. And this, in a nutshell, is what so many of us are doing with OCD. We're very unmindful a lot of the time of what is actually going on, that we're constantly trying to escape discomfort. We're looking for a way to not have uncertainty. We're trying to feel, you know, just right all the time. And it's this escape from the pain that actually creates this kind of OCD cycle. Because rather than just allowing ourselves to feel the discomfort that comes up when we experience obsessions, instead we're straight away grasping for something that is going to make us feel better. And this really kind of, you know, keeps us stuck in the trap. And I think Gabor Marty really sums that up very well in that simple quote there. Um, and here's a slightly longer quote, um, talking about, you know, more or less the same thing, but in a really eloquent way. Um, it's by um, Mark Nepo. We waste so much energy trying to cover up who we are when beneath every attitude is the want to be loved and beneath every anger is a wound to be healed and beneath every sadness is the fear that there will not be enough time. When we hesitate in being direct, we unknowingly slip something on, some added layer of protection that keeps us from feeling the world and often that thin covering is the beginning of a loneliness which if not put down, diminishes our chances of joy. It's like wearing gloves every time we touch something and then forgetting we choose to put them on. We complain that nothing feels quite real. Our challenge each day is not to get dressed to face the world, but to unglove ourselves so that the doorknob feels cold and the car handle feels wet and the kiss goodbye feels like the lips of another being, soft and unrepeatable. And I absolutely love um, this kind of quote or or short passage here, you know, because it really, again, it really sums up, you know, a big part of what is going on with OCD. Um, You know, we're we're trying to distract ourselves from the difficulties of life. Um, You know, those those difficult things like, you know, like touching a, 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 a metal door handle on a really cold day. Or, you know, actually going out when it's blustery and wet and cold outside. These things are uncomfortable. 
And, you know, we, we dress up in the appropriate clothing, and we should do in order to deal with those things. But when it comes uh, to OCD and the inevitable uh, storms and challenges that come up um, with OCD, rather than actually, you know, allowing ourselves to feel uh, that, we are kind of putting on clothes, but we're putting on excessive numbers of clothes. We're wrapping ourselves up in so many layers that it's almost impossible to kind of be aware of anything at all. We've got so many jumpers on, so many coats over that, that we're really blocking ourselves from all of the beautiful stuff in our life, all of the things that have meaning and depth to them. You know, of course, also, they they have challenge to them. There's There's difficulty about them. You know, when we experience... Uh, love, for example, of course, there's also the possibility of losing something. Uh, where, when we experience joy, there's also the, the possibility for sadness. And often we just don't want to experience, you know, these intense emotional states. We'd much rather just be kind of caught up in, you know, performing compulsions, because in some way that keeps us safe. That's like keeping all of those clothes on. It protects us from, you know, from the sharp edges of the world, but it doesn't actually allow us to really find joy and meaning in, in all of the, the kind of challenges and the difficulties that come up. And so to be able to kind of really do this, you know, in order to start living our life in a way where we start allowing the uncertainty, we start allowing anxiety, um, you know, and, and not just demanding that things be perfect all the time or that we have that just right feeling all the time. You know, we, we have to find a way to actually bring a certain level of mindfulness to our obsessions. And this simply means that, you know, whenever an obsession comes up, we don't straight away, you know, reach for the same old um, things, the same old coping mechanisms that we've always used in order to push away the discomfort associated with that obsession. And instead, we try to be a bit more mindful. Okay, here's this obsession. And, you know, maybe that obsession has been coming up a lot lately. So actually, you've started to become a bit more familiar with it. Um, and when we're mindful of that, you know, when we start to recognize what are the things that are coming up on a daily basis, um, how often are they coming up? And, you know, maybe you've been actually writing that down in your journal somewhere and that's been helping you to kind of uh, reflect a little bit more on, um, on it. Just these little processes here are actually part of that kind of mindful um, you know, process that will actually help you to see the OCD from a different perspective. Um, really, what we want to do is, is to try to create some separation between you and that obsession, because as we know with OCD, a big problem with it is we start to kind of uh, become one with the obsession. We fuse with it as if we believe that it's absolutely real. Um, you know, we take it at face value. And the problem with doing this is, of course, uh, the more the more that you fuse with that thing, the, the more difficult it is to kind of walk away from it, the more that we feel that we have to disprove it or get rid of it or not allow the emotional state that comes up associated with it. And so, you know, we get more and more stuck. And, you know, the, the only alternative to this really is through kind of a certain level of mindful acceptance. Um, you know, so number one, we need to get a bit better at noticing those obsessions um, you know, by writing them down, by by actually speaking about them sometimes without looking for reassurance, um, you know, but then once we've been able to get better at spotting them, we also need to be able to do something with them, um, you know, other than just try to push them away or push them down or get rid of the difficult emotions. And, you know, this is where uh, diffusion techniques can be very helpful or this is where exposure work can be very helpful. Um, with diffusion techniques, what we might do with those uh, difficult things that come up is actually tr uh, try to create that separation between ourselves and that thought by simply labeling the thought perhaps 
um, by maybe making a joke out of the thought, using a silly voice with it to try to take some of the power away from it. Because so often, when we're not being mindful, um, we take those those thoughts so seriously. And just to bring some humor uh, to those thoughts, um, even kind of, um, you know, kind of make fun of them a little bit with a silly voice, you know, that can help to create that separation that I was talking about. Uh, sometimes I even encourage people to to kind of thank the thought, which may seem uh, a bit ridiculous on the face of it. But when we're able to kind of say, thank you, oh, thank you, brain. Thank you very much for, for bringing that thought up. Uh, of course, there I'm kind of mixing it in with some sarcasm, but we say thank you to the thought. And on some level, that changes the way in which we're viewing it and dealing with it. So that can also be a very helpful thing to do. Um, Another thing that's taken from acceptance commitment therapy is to kind of say to yourself, I notice I'm having the thought that. And by doing this, we're creating that separation between ourselves and that thought again. And we're able to kind of take a slightly more mindful perspective. And if you want a helpful analogy, really, of what we're doing here is if you imagine a kind of pirate ship and your pirate ship has just been invaded by another ship and you're the captain and you really want to kind of see what's going on so that you're able to give orders to your crew. Ideally, what you could do then is to climb up into the crow's nest where you can look down onto uh, onto the ship um, floor and you can see exactly what's going on and therefore you can give orders uh, in an appropriate way to to make sure that your crew is defending the ship correctly and you know and if we're just if we just stay there um, on on the floor of the ship well unfortunately you know we're going to get inundated we're not going to be able to see what's going on and uh, we might end up losing that battle and it's so much better then if you can kind of take a few deep breaths try to slow everything down climb up to that crow's nest that metaphorical crow's nest look down onto the floor of the ship and you know and and kind of make some decisions from that slightly elevated perspective you know the breath is so often a really great way to bring that mindfulness uh in into the scenario here like a really great way to actually get into that bird's uh, into that crow's nest is actually to to kind of focus on maybe taking three or four or five or even if you can 10 kind of slightly deeper breaths than normal where you exhale and exhale for slightly longer that can be a great way to just calm yourself down and then you know take a look again at what's going on and you may be able to see things from that that slightly more uh, positive and helpful perspective rather than just getting lost in those thoughts and going around in circles and you know getting tied up in knots with OCD which is unfortunately that place where if we're not careful, when we're not mindful, you know, we can get, we can kind of end up in again and again. So it's so important that we do try to bring this sense of mindfulness, um, you know, to our obsessions. And, you know, it may seem like a contradiction to say, you know, mindful obsessions, but actually, you know, when we do bring that level of mindfulness, we don't have to get rid of the obsession. Uh, often with OCD, you know, it feels like we need to find the perfect cure. Um, you know, almost like kind of Gabor uh, Mate was talking about at the start. Uh, the attempt to escape from pain is what creates more pain. When we're so focused on, you know, always trying to find that cure or get rid of the OCD, it's resistance and often it just tends to make it worse. You know, and so and so instead, if we're able to bring, you know, mindfulness and acceptance to those obsessions, well, often those obsessions begin to resolve themselves, you know, and we don't have to put all that effort into it. It just involves, you know, trying to create a little bit of separation between you and your thoughts. Try to allow things a little bit more. And often things do begin to resolve themselves. So there we go, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that one. If you have any questions at all about anything that I've spoken about today, do please let me know. And I will see you next time. Just a quick reminder that if you want to get a free session, all you need to do to get that is to head over to my website, www.robertjamescoaching.com. And there you can leave me a message and we can arrange the uh, free session. And now just a quick reminder 
of my disclaimer. Any information that you view on my website, Instagram page, Facebook group, or anywhere else online, or any information that you listen to on the podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for actual medical or mental health advice from a doctor, psychologist, or any other medical or mental health professional. 